this is where we were. We discussed the, what hash table is and what it is featured and why it is an optimal choice if you are doing any search operations, especially if you need to do many different searching operations. And this was our first application problem. We discussed how to solve those, say using hash table, because every time if you see any, anything asking you to possibly perform a search, you need always to think about, like here is a find, to always think about if hash table can be possibly be applied. And we also mentioned that the hash table, if you use hash table on this, the time complexity would be determined by two segments of your code. The first one would be build a hash table. This means you need to hash map. You need to traverse the whole array to build it. That runs on big old thing. The second part, second part should be find out which item has or which key has a value as one. That means you need to traverse the whole hash map uh, key set. Traverse key set. Because the hash map key would be different from the length of the array, more or less like n divided by two. as this is saying that every element uh, appears two times. So if you divide it by two, this is what you got. If you add them together, that's still big O of n. And by the time we were done with this, I mentioned for you to think about, if you can possibly do a little bit faster than, than this, than your first approach, Maybe you still end up with the same time complexity, but you don't really need to traverse this given array or something similar data structure for two times. Instead, of just to traverse it for one time. Can you do that? Or did you get a chance to think about this? Um, could you sort it and then um, sort the uh, array and then figure out if only if one of the numbers appeared only once between two numbers that appeared twice? So you're saying you need to sort this first. What's the time complexity of performing a sort? Log in, depending on the, which one we use. Log in. The Log. best time complexity of any sorting algorithm would be what? You sure it's log in? Is it n log n? Yeah, that's the best time complexity of any sorting algorithm. So if you sort it, this is already slower than, than this. And we didn't even get into whether this would be a right way to solve the problem. But once you do the sorting, it's already slower. So is there a way that you can do this without sorting it? Sorting is always slower than just the traversal. Okay, let's talk about this. Say, the last time when we were discussing all the basic operations of, of hash table, we mentioned one of the basic operation, which is thus, which is key set, right? 
what does this return? It returns a set. And we explained briefly what this means mathematically. It's more or less like a data storage that can only contain unique elements. If you have duplicates, it doesn't accept any duplicates. Do you think this can be applied here to make things easier? Appear, appearing for two times, that means there are a bunch of duplicates. Nearly half of the elements are duplicates, but only one element that doesn't have a duplicate. Um, you could make a key set or, or just a set of the array and then compare the original array with the set and then see which value is uh, not or is in excess in the set. Yeah, you are on certainly on the right track. What if we start with a set? What if we start with a set? Let's define a set. Set only accepts reference data type as the, as the base type. So this has to be integer if you are dealing with int. But you don't really need to do anything to transfer int to integer or from integer to int. It's called auto boxing. Java will take care of that for you. Let me define a set. OK. It's, we can start that as just empty. Then I'm going to traverse the given data structure, which is the array nonce, for one time. Traverse the array. Because you have to traverse the whole array to find the element. You really don't know where it is. Now let's, let's clarify some details or say, Think about what you need to do during the traversal and how that would be related to the set that you have. This is another tool. Although this is not specifically required for you to know, and it does help solving a lot of problems. If you don't know this, it's going to make your life more difficult. So how do we, what do we do with the set here? We know that it only takes unique values, even if you put in a duplicate, it doesn't accept any. You can remove values from the set as well. It's very simple. Given these features, you can think of a way to use the set efficiently, so we can traverse the array for one time, then the only element you have in hand would be the one that doesn't have a duplicate. Would uh, would you be able to use contains key? Yes, of course you can use contains key. The same, exactly the same method as it is in hash table. If you find this difficult to think of, let me give you an example. Okay, this is your example. This is a line enough. What do you do with it? We know that which one is, ah, uh, my bad. Which one is the element you are supposed to return? Seven. What do you do with it? Now you have a set, some more set up. Can we do this, say, for any element in this array, for any element in this array, I'm gonna put that into the set. I'm going to put it into the set. So if you do this, the set eventually would become one. One, four, five, nine, seven. If you just traverse the array and put every element in the set, this is what you would end up with. This doesn't seem to really help for you to solve the problem. So you certainly need to do more on top of that. What do you do? If you put another duplicate, say one, if it's already in the set, then if it comes to the other one, you could be able to check whether the set already contains the other one or not. If it does, what do you do? 
delete it or remove it? Remove it. Yep, remove it. Maybe that could be a way. Someone is asking, is there a method that returns one or zero depending on if the element was inserted into the set? Nope. When you insert something into the set, it's si silently done. But you can check whether there are elements already sitting in the set. If you add a duplicate, it ends up silently as well. But you can check, you can use the same method to check whether something is already there. As some of you put, if it's already there, like if one is already there, then you remove that. If this is the case, if this is what you do, for any possible duplicates, you remove the stuff that's already in the set. What would you end up with in the set? Just seven. Just the seven. So can you just return the single value from the set in the end? No. Yeah. That's a possible solution. You can traverse um, the, go ahead. So are you traversing it um, twice or? Uh, no, just okay. the once, just the once. So for every number in nums, for every number in nums, I'm not going to put into it into the set directly. I'm going to check if okay. none is already in the set. If this is the case, what do I do? Remove, as you said. Uh, remove now. Else, what do I do? Also, I just put it into, into the set. It might be a put or add. I forgot the syntax. Then in the end, I can be confident in the set will only contains one element. It only contains one element. And I can return that. I can return the only element, possibly remove, would it give you the last element as well, or a different method. But this is a large picture idea if you use a set. How many times did we traverse the given data structure? That's only for one time, one pass. It's still running on big O of N, but we are literally faster than the first method we covered because we save ourselves from another traversal. Okay. Does uh, I'm sorry. Does um uh, or does the remove function does that not take a lot of time compared to? Oh, it's trivia. It's Run, yeah. you can think it as running on big O one. Huh, okay. Yep, other removal possibly as long as that's not a data structure, as, as, that, as long as that's not a tree structure, then it's all trivia. Okay. The tree structure may involve something like you need to restore the property of the tree, like what we covered on heap, that would be slow, but for this, this is more or less like a linear data structure. But also like, likewise, I'm assuming contains key is also trivial. Yep, how contains key, as answer? we said, we covered this, right? We covered how hash table works, how hash table works, and how you literally search for something. That's basically what it means by saying contains key, this is search on a hash table. For a set, that's the same idea. Mm -hmm. That runs on big of one time. Okay, thank you. Yep. Is set a hash table? Is that why it's able to find uh Is it a hash key? table? It's it's not a hash table. It doesn't involve any values. It doesn't accept a pair of values. Mm -hmm. You can think this as what? You can think set as only the keys of a hash table. Okay. Only the keys of hash table. 
a collection of a keys of the hash table. Does that help? Yes. Okay. So as we covered so many different application problems, you can see what, what are data structures. If that's not clear to you in the beginning, it should be more clear now. It's just a bunch of tools. When do you which, use which tools? It really depends on what a problem you're solving. So a key idea or key capability is to analyze a problem and understand which data structure is most, mostly ideal for you to solve the problem to make your solution efficient. Okay, let's practice.